This news update is brought to you by. Grab somebody and tell them hello. Welcome to the Barbados Today Afternoon Update for Wednesday, October 7th. Thanks for joining us. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Six people were taken for medical treatment following an early morning vehicular accident at a Maxwell Main Road Christchurch that left 10 others nursing minor injuries. The accident occurred around 15 minutes past 8 involving a ZR van and a motor car. None of the injuries were said to be life-threatening, but passengers complained about pains to the neck, chest, shoulders and other parts of the body. Acting Assistant Superintendent of Police John Maxwell was in charge of this morning's mass casualty that engaged the attention of emergency personnel from four ambulances, a fire truck and the police. An accident occurred about 8.15 this morning along Maxwell Road with its junction Dover Road involving a motor car J1140 and a ZR to two six. Um, the ZR had a number of people or passengers in it. There were some 16 persons within that vehicle who complained of minor injuries. Um, we sought to have the matter investigated and we employed the resources of the Army service. We had a doctor on site and members of the Barbados Fire Service came to the scene. Um, Unfortunately, there were no serious injuries. Six persons have left to seek medical attention, and five, as I understand it, we're going to fast track and the other one to the QBH. Mm -hmm. Could the driver of the car was injured as well? Of the car, yes, he is one of those persons who was injured. Meantime, Acting Police Public Relations Officer, Acting Station Sergeant Roland Cobbler says so far officers had to respond to eight other accidents on the country's roads and he's appealing to motorists and pedestrians to be more vigilant. I just want to make an appeal to motorists to exercise a greater level of due care and attention while using the road. Be mindful of the fact that the rain is upon us now and that it is imperative that their driving practices coincide with the conditions of the roadway. So driving practices must change based on the road conditions. Officials from two of the sectors hit by gun violence in recent times are calling for more to be done to bring the perpetrators to justice. The plea comes on the heels of the shooting death of 23-year-old Jamal Worrell while he was working on a farm in St. Peter and the recent robberies at gas stations. The Barbados Agricultural Society, which represents farmers, and the Barbados Petroleum Dealers Association, the umbrella body for operators of service stations, tells Barbados today the situation is worrying and protecting workers and business is now paramount. BES President James Paul, in expressing sadness at Worrell's death, said the incident is a painful reminder of the risk facing agriculture workers. But the fact that they are now using guns um, and taking the lives of farmers and really to protect that young man's life is something, of course, that we all have to condemn. And I do hope that justice is brought to those persons who perpetrated that, that particular crime. I don't think, and I think we should do everything possible to ensure that the persons who perpetrated that crime, that they are brought to justice. Meanwhile, the acting president of the Petroleum Dealers Association says gas stations have already stepped up their security as a result of the situation. Where is the justice? Cuba's ambassador, Francisco Pena, is disturbed that 39 years after a Cubana aircraft flight plunged into the sea of the west coast of Barbados, the crime has been left unpunished and there are still no answers. Why are families of the victims still waiting for justice? 39 years after this despicable act of barbarity. Why is the biggest terrorist of this hemisphere 
walking freely around the world, not only in the U.S. territory. Remember that he was in Panama recently during the summit of America, provo provoking many things. While at the same time, alleged works against international terrorism are being released on behalf of the international community. Employees from the Barbados Revenue Authority have been summoned to an emergency meeting this afternoon with their bargaining agent, the National Union of Public Workers. Acting Assistant General Secretary Wayne Waldron says the 3.30 meeting will discuss matters coming to the fore from the transition of custom workers to the BRE. The media has been called to review what is the state of affairs with workers' terms and conditions since the transition. We will need to be updated on what are the challenges and what are the issues arising. We also want to look at the election and shop stores as you are aware that the transition in the past would have had some interesting developments and we want to see to ensure that um, looking at the way forward that any arising issues coming out this transition we will be able to address in a satisfactory manner. You're looking forward to get to know this afternoon, I see. We could got some challenges because with the revenue collection, getting staff off at a certain thing can be a challenge, but we hope at least we can get our representative group, even if it's a small group that will represent a cross section the Revenue Authority um, Department. You will look calling up people like the guards too, I guess the guards will be coming too. Not necessarily. We're looking at mostly those in revenue collection and not necessarily security. But as I said, even if we get a representative group of cross-section from the different entities that are spread across the island, I think that would be still an effective meeting where we can communicate what the issues are in every department. One of the key elements missing in the cultural industries is an association. The, observ the observation sorry, by President of the Barbados Film and Video Association, Lynette Isman, who says such an organization is critical in aiding the development of the sector. She made the comments while taking part in the International Business Week Public Discussion Forum at the Errol Barrow Center for Creative Imagination last evening. Eastman is also of the view that players in the industry must bring something to the table when going about seeking help from corporate Barbados. If those in the cultural sector or those in the traditional or we call it traditional sectors to come to the table, I think it is their responsibility to try to figure out what would cause them to come to the table. There, there's, there's always a suggestion that the traditional sector should do this, they should do that, and that corporate partners needs to come on board. You hear that over and over again, and I always wonder why. I mean, why should they? Why? I mean, they're there, they're making money, out of the goodness of their heart, they'll support a football team or contribute money to something, uh, to a children's home or put a piece of equipment in the community. But you know, it's a real world. It's a real world. It's a business world. If you want someone to come and sit at the table with you, you have to put something on the table. There's regional and international news after this short break. To the region now in St. Lucia, members of the legal fraternity are mulling over government's plan to adopt the Caribbean Court of Justice as the island's final court of appeal. More in this report from Alison Kentish of HDS News Force. The local bar association heard from Magistrate Ermin Moise last week on the arguments for and against the move. And for the most part, this concern rests on the premise that there is a widespread lack of trust 
in the political and judicial elite, and that the small size of these Caribbean nations make us very susceptible to bias and political manipulation. It is my view, however, that this discussion has been dominated by polar sides of this debate for far too long. Those who oppose the patriating of this important judicial function are often branded as being blinded by the effects of colonialism and the crippling deference to our former colonial masters. On the other hand, those who favor the linking from the Privy Council are often branded as having hidden agendas and a deep-rooted desire to control and manipulate the judiciary. Moise says it is important to find the middle ground in the CCJ Privy Council debate. He says the fact is Caribbean citizens are demanding a judicially independent court and the CCJ has taken significant steps to be just that. And finally, a retired Church of England bishop has been jailed for a string of offenses against teenagers and young men. 83-year-old Peter Ball was sentenced to 32 months for misconduct in public office and 15 months for indecent assaults to run concurrently. Last month, he admitted the two offenses against 18 teenagers and young men in the 1970s, 80s, and 90s. The Church of England said there were no excuses. Following the sentencing, the Bishop of Durman, Reverend Paul Butler, said the systematic abuse of trust perpetrated by Ball was a matter of deep shame and regret. It is deeply shameful what happened, and it would be deeply shameful if it ever happened again. Uh, our systems are much more robust uh, and very different from what they were in 93. So they sh it should not be possible. And that's news and sports, but for the very latest, log on to www.barbudistoday.bb, subscribe to our e-paper, our email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals or Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you, as well as Channel 101 on Flow TV and Mix 96.9 FM. There you can get all the latest news and sports. Don't forget to join us again for our evening updates. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Good afternoon. Thank you.